So I want to get better at working on and building guitars. To that end, I went out to a flea market a few years ago and I picked up a cheap $20 guitar so that I can work on it and if I mess it up, it's no big deal. Just to let you know, I have done a couple of things to this guitar. I have leveled the frets, that went great, and I have widened the tuning peg holes. That did not go great. I used a hand file to get in there. I didn't have power tools at the time. I only was able to get these classical tuners, so that's how I got them to fit in there. I, it's a mess. I am. I know. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna fix that today. And just to have some fun, I'm going to present myself with the challenge of fixing this thing up only with materials that I have at my disposal. Luckily, I do have lots of paints and things like that. But in the meantime, let's get to work. During this build, I do make some mistakes. I'll address them when they come up. So if you're trying this at home, you can hopefully avoid them for yourself. Anyway, to the build, first I removed that strap holder thing from the bottom, and I also removed the pick guard. I was pretty skittish about removing anything else and messing with how the guitar like performs and stuff, so my plan was just to use a lot of masking tape and just try to not mess anything up. Then I set to scraping off the existing paint. Easiest way I know to strip paint off of something, especially if it's just kind of like on the surface and brittle, is get a good sharp knife, place it perpendicular to the surface, and scrape. <laughs> tends to come right off. This part was actually like a lot of fun and really satisfying. And this is gonna be a shocker, but this process did kick up a lot of dust and like varnish chips and stuff. So breathing protection is definitely advised. And you can see me beginning to make a mistake here. The wood for the guitar, which I'm pretty sure is poplar, is very soft. And when I scraped across the grain instead of with the grain, things got pretty scuffed up pretty fast. Same goes for sandpaper. And here you can see me realizing the error of my ways. And here we are, all paint, well, most of the paint removed. This is really interesting because there's actually parts of the body that have been kind of filled in, which I didn't expect for such a cheap guitar for them to do that much attention to detail, but I decided to kind of leave the fretboard alone. I really didn't want to mess with it too much, and I plan on doing kind of a dark color on it anyway, so I left some of the paint that was it was just kind of being difficult. But turning our attention to the bridge, I thought this was plastic, but actually you can see the strings have kind of rubbed off some of the paint on it and it looks like it's actually wood. So let's get that cleaned up. Scraping here, same process as before, but with the complication of those faux mother of pearl inlays, I wound up removing them and they got destroyed in the process. So I'll be replacing those with some 3D printed pearlescent inlays, which is good because I've been wanting to try that. Then it was time to address those tuning peg holes. I used a quarter inch, I think Forstner bit to get in there and get them uniform. Now it was finally time to get to painting. I decided to use acrylic ink to get a vibrant color, but also allow some of the green to show through. Here I am experimenting with color options. Ultimately, I decided to go for a gray top and an orange everything else. And once again, you can see why that cross grain scraping was such a big deal. The ink really sinks into those spots. So I decided to shoot for a, a rustic appearance. The rest of the painting went really well, except for, um, one thing. Quick art hack. If you're looking for a creative way to never get your security deposit back, just set your inks near the edge of the table with their lids not quite screwed all the way on and ruin the damn carpet. Uh... Well, that was a nightmare. Please don't tell my landlord. But apart from that, it did go really well. And I like this orange color because it reminds me of these cabins my family and I used to stay at in the Catskill Mountains when I was a kid. And for whatever reason, yeah, they were this orange. Anyway, shout out to Carl's Rip Van Winkle Motor Lodge. For the top, I wound up doing a bunch of different layers. It was just kind of difficult to get it to a place where I was happy with it. Once again, you'll notice a theme, those cross grain scrapes were more of an issue. My solution was just to cover them up with as much opaque ink as possible to get them gone. Then I painted the bridge and I swear I taped off the edges properly, but I guess the wood texture combined with the viscousness of the ink let some leak through. Fixing this wasn't too bad. I just sanded the color back and went in with some more color and turned out fine. For the fretboard, I just slathered it in black ink and wiped down the frets. Nothing terribly complicated there. Finally, with all the painting done, I applied a finishing wax as the final step. And once again, 
the rough spots were an issue. Wax got in there and with finishing wax you want a thin layer and then you want to buff it out, but because there were parts that were rough and recessed, it became nearly impossible to buff out those spots. So I guess that's the big lesson from this project. Yeah, can't BS your way out of a bad sanding, at least not with like wax and ink. So lesson learned. So then it was time to put the finishing touches on everything. I 3D printed a bunch of parts. Here I made like some DPU gaskets to go into those holes and kind of cover up those awful hand filed edges while also making them a proper size. I think they turned out really good. I like the way they look. Then I attached that bottom knob strap holder thing and printed out another one for the back so now I can strap it up. I also took the liberty of printing out some little end cap things for the strings in black PLA. Just thought it would look cool. And since I scraped off the decoration around the sound hole, I printed up a new pick guard with that element incorporated and I really like it. And here are those pearlescent inlays. These are printed in like a silk PLA and I just stuck them in there with some rubber cement. And I did the same rubber cement application for the pick guard as well. The idea behind this was that it would not only adhere the stuff, but it would also kind of absorb any sound vibrations. I was a little worried that the wax would get in the way of the glue working, but it didn't. So in a build, pretty fraught with things not really going my way. I'm glad this one worked out. Then I strung it up and I was done. This build really gave me an appreciation for people that build guitars on a regular basis. It's not an art form with a lot of forgiveness. You pay for your mistakes, you can't run away from them. So I will keep that in mind moving forward. I do like the way it looks. I wish that I didn't make so many mistakes getting there, but hey, that's the whole point of this project. Now, next time I'll know. But hey, thanks for watching, really appreciate it. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you like watching me work on instruments, I think you'll like this video where I made a 3D printed travel ukulele. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.